My husband claimed grief led him to sleep with his ex-wife after our daughter's death, but then I discovered they'd been having an affair for four months. Now they're living together while I'm left picking up the pieces of my shattered life. My stepdaughter Becca, 14, died four weeks ago. I've been in her life since she was seven years old. We were extremely close. My husband Derek, 40, his ex-wife Sam, 38, and I, 35, get along very well. There has never been an issue in the seven years that I've been with Derek. Sam has always been kind to me. She didn't even care that Becca called me mom too. Right after Becca's passing, Sam had so much anxiety and depression that she was unable to be by herself. She has no family besides us, so we invited her to stay with us. Sam hardly leaves the house. She mostly just sleeps in Becca's room, which is completely understandable. I always tell her that I'm here if she needs me and that I want her to take her time grieving and that there is no pressure to go back to her home. Today, I needed to run some errands, so I asked Sam if she'd like to join me to get out of the house a little bit, but she declined and said she'd rather just stay at the house and sleep. I told Derek that I was leaving and that I would be back in two-ish hours. He works through Rod. I also told him to check on Sam every once in a while and maybe try getting her to eat something. After stopping at the post office, I realized I forgot my library book that I needed to return, so I went back home to get it. So as soon as I walked in the door, I heard moaning coming from mine in Derek's bedroom. I immediately knew what was happening and my heart completely broke at that moment, so I wasn't completely sure what to do, but I ended up deciding to confront them. So I walked to the bedroom and opened the door and began yelling at them both. Sam started having an anxiety attack and ran to the bathroom while Derek kept apologizing profusely. I asked him what the hell was happening. He told me that he made himself and Sam some lunch and they began talking about Becca and shared some memories. And then Sam ended up kissing him and he didn't pull back and then it ended with them in our bed. They're begging me to understand that it was just grief that caused them to become intimate and that they both made a mistake. I don't know what to do. I love this man, and I love Sam. I'm heartbroken that they did this to me and put me in this position. I feel so stuck. Relevant comments comment one that would be hard for me. I understand grieving, but how is this excusing cheating? What happens next time he is sad? It, I misspoke when I said sad. Obviously, this is something beyond devastating. I still don't think it can be used as an excuse. OP. I don't want to excuse his cheating. I think I want to divorce him, but I'm anxious about doing it right after we lost Becca. Comment two, probably together. Do you both own the home? If it's in your name, change the locks. Stay strong and don't listen to his excuses. I am so sorry this happened to you during such a difficult time. OP, exactly what I was thinking if I'm being honest. And yes, we both own it. When I told him to leave, he kept saying sorry and then said that he would leave and respect me wanting him gone for a while. Comment 3, are you seeing a therapist perhaps? You're dealing with a lot right now, it might be useful. OP, yes, I am in therapy. I've been with my therapist for other things for the last three years. She's been very helpful. I saw her yesterday and was able to figure some things out. OP, I decided that I'm filing for a divorce. I can't ever trust Derek again. It sucks because we had an amazing relationship, I thought. He's always been great, so this was a complete shock to me. Last night, Derek came over to talk. He confessed a lot. Turns out it wasn't their first time having sex like most people thought. They've been having sex since three months before Becca died. I am completely shocked and heartbroken. Sam also reached out last night and thanked me for everything I've done for her and told me she was sorry. I didn't respond. I blocked her. I did so much for Sam and considered her a friend, so this hurts a lot, more than I can handle. This is all too much. As hard as this is going to be, I need to leave Derek and cut them both out of my life. I am ready to do so. I am done. Also, some people are saying I deserve this because I should have known better than to let Sam into our home around Derek. But you need to understand that I'm a giving person. I trust people more than I should. I truly thought Sam was an amazing person. I know it's unusual to become friends with your husband's ex-wife, but it's just how it went for us, and I shouldn't be blamed for what happened. Thank you to everyone who commented nice things and for the kind messages. You've all been helpful during this insanely difficult time. I appreciate it. Relevant comments comment, out of curiosity, what are his excuses for cheating? Those two are going to be in a world of hurt once the guilt settles in. They're going to be asking themselves why it had to be Becca and will eventually come to the conclusion that it's their punishment for what they've done to you. I can pretty much guarantee you that. OP, he told me that they just accidentally reconnected one night when I was away at my mom's. He was stressed we weren't conceiving and were having miscarriages, so he vented to Sam and then somehow that led to sex. It seemed so icky to me. How can he vent about our struggles like that and then go and have sex with Sam? It's just awful of him. I don't understand it. Editor's note, remove the first half of the updates as it was a rehash of update hash one. Updates two. I'm getting lots of questions about some things so I figured I'd answer a few of them. Have I told anyone about what happened besides my mom? Yes, I told a few friends and some family members. Most of them are supportive of my decision and aren't speaking to Derek. Where is Derek staying? Currently, he's staying at a hotel. Our friends refuse to let him stay with them.
He's lost a lot of people due to his awful decisions. Has he tried fighting me on getting a divorce? Yes, he begged me not to file for divorce, but when I told him I needed him to just let me go and that I was too exhausted to fight him on this, he let it be and agreed to getting a divorce. Why isn't Derek staying with Sam? He told me he didn't want to continue to hurt me. So he told Sam he was done with her for good and that they have no reason to speak to each other anymore. I have no idea if that'll last and if they'll just end up together, but I truly don't care what they do anymore. I just want peace. What was Derek's excuse for cheating? He told me that they just accidentally reconnected one night when I was away at my mom's. He was stressed we weren't conceiving and were having miscarriages, so he vented to Sam and then somehow that led to sex. Disgusting of them both, I know. Feel free to ask anything else and I'll try to answer. Thank you everyone for your support and advice. Relevant comments OP on what happened to Becca. OP, it was very sudden. She died in a car accident when she was with one of her friends and her friend's parents. OP on her husband's parents being supportive or not, and if they know about his cheating OP, I get along with Derek's mom very well, but he's also a mama's boy, so it's kind of complicated. She will always be there for him. He'd stay with her if she didn't live across the country. She knows what he did and told me she had a talk with him, but said that he's still her son and she'd help him with anything if he needed it. I'm thinking I need to cut her out of my life too, which makes me really sad because we were close and talked on the phone almost daily. OP on if she has children with her husband. OP, we've had six miscarriages total. All of them were in the first trimester. More updates. I just found out that he is staying with Sam and not at the hotel. He told me it's too expensive to stay at a hotel and Sam is the only one that'll help him right now. I had a feeling this would happen. Just knowing that they are still probably sleeping together hurts my heart. I talked to a lawyer this morning and we are proceeding with the divorce and Derek agreed to it. It's actually happening and I feel some relief that he's not fighting me on this. My mom leaves on Sunday. I'm scared to be alone, but I back to work on Monday so I'm hoping it'll be a good distraction. I'll keep updating if anything else happens. Thank you, everyone. I am so grateful for you all. Relevant comments. Comment one, OP. How did you find out he was staying at his ex-wife's place? Anything he says should be taken with a grain of salt. He's not true to his words and going on contact with Sam. To OP, he texted me this morning after we talked to lawyers and said he just wants to be honest with me. I told him to stop giving me updates on what he's doing in his life, and it's not something I need to know. It seems like he wanted to tell me to hurt me. OP on how she is doing. OP, Thank you, I'm doing a little better today. My mom and I went on some nature walks and went out into the garden this afternoon that helped. Becca loved gardening with me, so it made me feel closer to her. I decided to go through some of Becca's stuff today. I just found her diary in a box in the back of her closet. Would it be wrong to read some of it? I feel like it would help me feel closer to her, but part of me feels like it's wrong too. I haven't told Derek that I found it either, and I'm unsure if I should tell him. What would you do? Relevant comments OP on if she was closer with Becca prior to her sudden passing OP, Becca and I were very close. It felt like she told me anything and everything, but I honestly think all parents feel that way about their kids, so I'm kind of nervous to read it. Just a little update. I figured it's been a few days, so I should give a little update. My mom is leaving in a couple hours, so I'll be alone. I'm kind of nervous about it. She helped me stay distracted and kept me going. It how I'm going to handle her being gone. I go back to work tomorrow, the first day back since Becca passed away. I'm looking forward to it, though, because it'll keep me distracted. So also, I did read some of Becca's diary. It made me love her even more. She was such a sweetheart. I went back a few months and saw that she noticed some weird behavior between Derek and Sam. Didn't mention that she knew of the affair, but, but she just wrote that she thought it was kind of strange that they tried some rousing kind of strange that they all three would hang out more than usual without me. I might read more, but so far I haven't found anything that's disturbing. Just her being a teenager and talking about crushes, fights with friends, happy family memories, etc. Tomorrow I'm also talking to my lawyer, so I might have more updates on that. Thanks for the continuous love and support, everyone. Last update for a while. Started randomly getting a lot more messages, comments, so I figured I'd do another little last update. My first week back at work went great. I wasn't expecting it to go so well, but thankfully it did. My coworkers were so helpful and patient with me. On Friday night, I decided I didn't want to stay home all weekend alone, so I decided to drive up to my mom's. It helps that I have a three-day weekend so I can spend more time with her. I'm heading back home tomorrow. Also, for those of you that have messaged me hateful things for reading Becca's diary, I just have to say, you aren't in my shoes right now, telling me I'm a bad mom because I'm reading her diary is just ridiculous. And I learned so much more about her, about how caring and sweet she is, and it made me love her even more. It's how I'm able to feel so close to her right now. So please don't tell me I'm a bad parent for just trying to get by one of the hardest times of my life. Delk have no idea what it's like. I might have much of an update, so this will be it. I'll come back and update once the divorce happens, though. Thank you to those of you that have been nothing but kind and helpful. You help me feel less alone. I'll forever be grateful. Sam saw my Reddit post and is threatening to sue me. Sam made a fake FB profile to message me 
and tell me she wants to sue me for telling strangers about what happened. Derek supports her apparently. I don't need this. Am I not allowed to vent about my life to people online? I just want life to get better. I'm so tired. Fuck you, Sam. Fuck you, Derek. Eat it. Sam is in the comments and messaged me on here too. Blocked her. Additional information from I'll pop on the message from Sam OP. No, I just ignored her. It might be an empty threat just to make my life harder, but I'm unsure. Her message said, so I was scrolling through TikTok and ended up on an account where they read Reddit posts and guess whose posts they read? Yours. First you tell friends and family and then you go to a bunch of strangers and tell them our life story. I can't believe you. It isn't just your business to tell. Becca would be so disappointed in you. Be prepared cause I think I'm going to be suing you for this. This was no one else's business. You did this to yourself. Remember that? I'm actually baffled. She thinks Becca would be disappointed in me. Now to the next story, story two, am I the A for leaving my boyfriend after nearly two years of dating because he bought lingerie for his best friend as a joke? My boyfriend, 28, and I, 24, have been together for a year and a half. I love him a lot and he has been pretty amazing to me. T is also the sort of person who has lots of friends and his close friends are pretty much family. T also loves to joke and play these harmless pranks on his friend, which sometimes makes me feel weird. And just for context, he has two female friends and three male friends. This is about my Beff and one of his friends, Claire, 28. Claire is a nice woman and we are friendly. My boyfriend also has never have ignored me in favor of his friends or talked over me in front of them, and which is why I don't understand if I'm in the right. They, my boyfriend's friends, had a recently escalated prank fight. So I had made it clear to my beef that I am not good at jokes and am rather stiff, and he said he would keep me out of it. Claire, my boyfriend, and another friend, Kyle, 27, even had a huge throwing water balloons fight in Kyle's backyard. And then my boyfriend got pranked that died in his body wash. Then Kyle got pranked by Claire something about wit whipping cream and oven it. But the issue was when my boyfriend brought a red lacy laundry set and he planned to put it in Claire's room the next time he went over. So I said it was a tacky prank and why would he buy laundry? None of the previous pranks have been of this kind and it makes me really uncomfortable. I also felt like if I was Claire, I would feel gross about it. But my boyfriend got mad and defensive and told me Claire is cool like that, and she would think it's funny. I admit, I get a bit weirded out when he calls Claire extremely beautiful and gustrin griddle, as she is all about how about how he's even way out of his league, but I think it's nothing and they were like family, so I guess it was their thing. However, the laundry prank had me put my foot down and I said that he was wrong to give another woman laundry, no matter who, when he had a girlfriend. We fought, and I said I wanted to break up, which he didn't want to, and I said the house, that I was just overreacting. He said that I was too conservative and needed to open my mind when he had never given me a reason to be insecure. Claire called me and said that she and my BF have been friends for a long time and inside jokes are just that and I'll learn with more age. I still feel weird about this. My best friend is supportive of me no matter what I do, but I have started to feel like I'm blowing this out of proportion. My boyfriend says that the fact that he told me and didn't hide it from me shows that I'm the problem. I have started to feel like I've blown this out of proportion and maybe it's my fault I can't take a joke. I really feel awful about this whole thing. ATA. Eat it. The people asking what the prank is with the lingerie. Apparently, it's an inside joke about how during their college days she had some problems with the color red and the lingerie would have just given her a shock of some kind, I guess. I told my boyfriend it was cruel, but he said it wasn't a trauma thing, just an inside joke. Claire also said over the phone that the lingerie thing was just an inside joke of their college days. Update. My inbox got flooded with DMs and had to turn off Reddit notifications. When I posted this, I was ready to be called immature and ridiculous and get a couple of comments, but it seemed like the post blew up and the comments were kind of eye-opening. TBH, before all this fiasco, my beef has always been nice to me. Came with me to my grad school functions, even though he found them very boring, but would do it so that I could network. He builds stuff like furniture and helps out with handiwork all the time. He is also very funny and at the very beginning I thought all his jokes were funny. And I sometimes wondered why he wanted to be with me, plus I was always busy with school and job interviews. His mom and I had even gotten close and she has been saying how happy she was that we were together. I had always ignored his and Claire's weird dynamic because I told myself I was being insecure. I have male friends too and I thought that just because we aren't like that doesn't mean my beef and Claire can't be close. Claire has also never been outright mean to me. She was just aloof and I thought it was because I was new to the group. To the actual update, my BF and I broke up. I'm sorry guys, but even after seeing so many replies on how he was cheating, I refused to believe it. I'm still in love with this guy and he called me like half a day after I wrote this post and asked to meet. I met him and he said that he understood where I was coming from, but I was always too uptight to understand that friendship is French friendship. He and Claire had known each other for years before I came into the picture and I cannot expect him to just ruin their dynamic. I asked him what sort of dynamic was Red Lingree. Why couldn't it be literally any other type of clothing? He told me he had it with my insecurities, and that he and Claire talked, and apparently I was making them sound like cheaters and homewreckers, and that he thought it was better I found someone like me, 
who thought the idea of a fun night was junk food and a movie indoors. That hurt a lot. He had always known I had insecurities about being called boring. He always complimented me on how his weaknesses were my strengths. Now he says things like this to me. Also, before this lingerie fiasco, I had never said a word about his and Claire's friendship. I always supported his pranks and practical jokes no matter my opinions on them because I thought it was his business what he did with his hobbies. And he leaves without even putting up a fight because his girlfriend didn't want him giving laundry to the woman he constantly refers to as his sexy bestie. Claire didn't call or text after the breakup either. But Kyle did and said that he was sad that we broke up and he hoped I would be okay in the future. I asked him if my beef ever cheated on me. He said my best AF had only been a one-woman man when he was dating me. But he could understand that some women can't handle female best friends, especially if they look like Claire. I told him to fuck off and blocked him. It felt like he only wanted to gloat and hurt me because my BF left. I feel like I never knew these people. Claire and Kyle were always at least decent to me if not nice. Did it make me a free target now that my BF has been telling his friends I'm an insecure child? I don't know what to do now. I have been told repeatedly by both my friends and sister that I dodged a bullet, but I have been breaking down like a kid again and again. I'm even thinking of going to therapy after feeling the most insecure I felt my whole life. Thank you to all who were supportive. It seems like my now ex-BF just did the work for me.